How's it going, everybody? Logan JYA Dry Kage here. Huge shout out to Triff for having me on to talk about my favorite deck of all time, the Drytrons, which is going to be another massive meta contender going into this new format. We ain't got no more Arise Heart to worry about. Bestial's got a slap on the wrist. And hey, we got a third copy of Herald of Arms like to deal with all those problematic monsters. So without further ado, I'm going to show you a few replays, some evidence to back up my claims that Drytron being one of the most powerful strategies in the game. I'm going to round things out with a quick deck profile for you. If you want the in-depth profile and combo tutorials sliding over to my channel i'm sure there'll be a link down below without further ado let's get into it all right homies let's kick things off with replay number one against the unchained a deck that many believe to be one of the best decks going to this brand new format so <laughs> let's bring him down a pick or two with the mighty drytron strategy so when the die roll of course we're setting ourselves up for success here i'm going to show you how to turn lemons into lemonade with a hand like this so alpha pitch delta gonna grab ben 10 delta pitch ben 10 gonna get us a free draw by revealing that dawn of the herald you see the chaos max in our hand that is the type of build we're playing if you are familiar with dry you know there's a lot of different ways to play you got your amor factor your vanity's ruler and the chaos max lock we'll talk about it a little bit more later but we actually back up this chaos max with the mighty dawn of the herald going into the herald of perfection so perfection is really really good in conjunction with our new third copy of orange light we're jacking up the fairy count in the main deck and we're giving more fuel to the fire for our perfection to gates so going to continue to combo and here is what i want to say you can see this end board right now now, let me describe to you for a moment, in case you're unfamiliar, what the Chaos Max lock exactly is. So if you're able to Ritual Summon Magician of Black Chaos Max on your own turn, and then link it off, or link off any other Ritual Monster to make the Dynamondo, you're able to, during your opponent's draw phase or standby phase, tag out the Dynamondo, summon back that Chaos Max, and then lock your opponent out of monster effects by this card's effect. So, it's a very powerful lingering effect, similar to the likes of Artifact Scythe. I mean, heck, there's a reason why those things are banned, right? And it's on the same level of the the Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity, King Kalyuga, things of that nature, okay? So that's the end board we got set up here. The IP is a little bit superlative here. Honestly, probably didn't need to make it. Could have made something like a Fuko to go along with it. But we also got our Perfection backing up that Chaos Locks with two negates. Really, the only way to stop this is with the Droplets, because this board, as it's currently made, cannot be super poly, can't be, can't be messed with, all right? So we're going to do exactly what I said. Chaos Lock them, no monster effects for the entirety of the opponent's turn. Into Prosperity for three. And here's what I want to warn you guys. I might have let him get away with a little bit too much here. Maybe I should have been a little less conservative with the Herald of Perfection of Gates. But hey, let him hit off the Imperm. Doesn't matter. Let him go for the Abom Search. Honestly, I didn't think it mattered. He clears off a little bit, but he's actually got that red dog in hand, and that might help buy him some time a little bit later on. But now Drytron's going to do what it does best and play out of the graveyard and continue to steamroll that advantage, searching off the Alpha, searching off the Ben 10, getting the free draws, and here we're going to line up one of the most powerful plays that Drytron has to offer, Cyber Angel Natasha, which is basically snatch deal times three is the best way I can describe it. So the opponent ends up having the Abom in hand. This guy right here, he is a 3k body that can also pop cards, but it's also another monster for us to steal with Natasha, because like I said, this, this card is not once per turn. So, we gotta have to spend a Perfection to gate, but it doesn't really matter. He gets to set his trap card, who even flipping cares? Set up the Apo in case there's any other unexpected surprises. We got more than enough for lethal on board, so we're gonna go on in clean out that game. Game one, ours, 100%. And that's how it should go against Unchained. If you're able to set up the Chaos Max Lock, there's a, not a lot that they can do. It's like being on Dweller, being under Dweller times like 30, right? Because you can't even use the ones in hand or anything like that. Now, they take the driver's seat, okay? So we've got that Yama, this insane new Link 2, and he sets up a relatively standard end board here. we got that King Caesar, and we've got that Unchained Solar Rage. So, I'm going to try and go for a Droplets play combined with the Drytron Nova to set myself up for a little bit of a slow roll strategy. Now, this is going to be challenging because if this Unchained Solar Rage hits the graveyard, they're actually going to be able to bring it back into rotation with that trap card that we know they have, the Chamber. But hey, it's all good. Since he activated a monster effect early in the turn, I can go for the Thrust, lock and load some additional names, and try and kind of overcome uh, any of that back row that the opponent currently has. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And going for a very similar strategy that we did to close out the last game is going for that Natasha. Now, mind you, just like I said earlier, it's come to fruition that the Unchained Solar Rage does return to the field. And he's going to use it to link off to make Anguish on my turn. But hey, I've still got Natasha locked and loaded. Let's go for a Boral Sword. Well, I might have alluded to this earlier, but Yama's got that sneaky graveyard effect, and it might prove to be uh, the undoing of me as I go in for the battle phase. We're going to swing on over, but wait a minute, Logan. Oh, you forgot that this card exists, so I'm not going to be able to go for a game far from it. Just going to get in a little bit of a poke. 
Now, he breaks out this cool engine. I think this is something that Pac did way back in the day. We got the Deus Ex Machina with the Vice King Requiem, a DDD package that offers a lot to the Unchained deck, including popping their own cards. Now, going into the second copy of Yama and steamrolling, getting that disaster is going to take care of my Boral Sword and leave me on very few cards compared to where we were. So, ends up ending on the Muckraker. I'm going to try and tag out for my Alpha and kind of try and reload the Natasha with that extra copy of Ben 10. We got plenty of names engraved, so just going to try and continue to generate advantage, get that free draw, get another search off that Ben 10, and see if I can break down this board. He's being very conservative now with his use, but now that I've already suffered it once, I know that the Yama is there. I'm not going to play into it again. So I end up going for the Mighty Underworld Goddess here to link this off without destroying anything to avoid any problems, and the cool thing about this is, not only do I have the Orange Light to negate any of the Grave Effects of a Rakia for for, for example, uh, I've also got the Yama, which is going to be, I've got the Yama to worry about, but Underworld Goddess takes care of that with its regular effect. It can negate something that would summon from Grave. So, easy, easy enough. Go for the lockout, use Dynamondo to shuffle that back in, not even risking proccing it, and then boom, that is going to be all she wrote. Closes out the match 2-0 against the Unchained. Let's move on to the next match. All right, next match is against Labyrinth, the trap deck that you either love to play or love to hate. And you might be satisfied to see how this game one goes. I apologize in advance to my friend here. Uh, yeah, hard opened harpies makes things kind of easy. We're not going to lie. But uh, honestly, I think any meta deck right now, worth its muster, can OTK through the equivalent of an empty board. Throws down the Silver Castle since they did use a trap. And we do eat an Ash Blossom, but it do it's not going to matter. We already took out all the problematic cards. And one Lady Labyrinth standing in my way is nothing but a monster to steal for our Natasha. So I'm going to able to go for a very, very safe Natasha OTK line here. Lining up the Zeta. We use the broken power of the Choju, which is basically pre-preparation on rights. Grabs you two cards when it's Tribute Summoned. You sack it over a Ben 10, all the better. And we're just going to continue to combo with the names. Go into Moy Beta. Detach. Summon Natasha. Gain some life. Link it off. Doesn't matter. I'm going to steal that joint. Gain some more life points. And then Boral Sword. That is over lethal by, I think, uh, 500. So that sets us up for success. Just like so. Again, Harpies was our main enabler there. That's why I think it's really important that we main deck Harpies Feather Duster. There's going to be a lot of decks, not just the Labyrinth that are playing back rows, but it's pretty applicable against some other rogue matchups as well, including one of the decks we might see in one of our last replays. It's not a terrible card to have. So, pretty standard opening board, but, ooh, man, we got to face off against the Gozen match right now. Now, I got to say this. If there's any Floodgate to be stuck under as a Drychon player, Gozen match is probably not the worst one. I'd, I'd harbor a bet that maybe getting Machine Locked under Rivalry would be bad, or if they catch you at a really bad time with Tikaboo. That's probably as bad as it's going to get. However, rivalry and, uh, I mean, excuse me, goes a match, not too terrible. We're going to be able to rail on through this because all of our dudes are light. And we're facing down another Lady Labyrinth. Okay, not a big deal because you know why? A monster effect was activated, which means we get to take advantage of the most powerful cards in the game right now, Triple Tactics Thrust. And I think this card's an absolute staple in Drytron, not only because it gives you access to those flexible power spells, things like Harpy's Feather Duster or Traps, like Evenly Match, but it also opens up the door to your engine. You've got your Cyber Emergency, your Drytron Nova, Foolish Burial, Preparation of Rights, just to name a few that are other targets you can search off of Tactics. Really, really nice when it is live. So, I mean, it's no guess as to what I'm going to grab here. Why the heck would I not go for the Feather Duster? I get hit with the Daruma Cannon, but it's not that big of a deal because we can actually still sack these face-down monsters for Ritual Summons. Not going to be the end of the world. And we still got names to activate, so I'm just going to grab those onto my hand, and we are going to be able to clean things out relatively swiftly, get our free search, go for that add back off Medionis. Again, being able to add back Medionis every single turn just is one of the few things that makes this deck so great. The recursion is unlike any other strategy I've really ever played in this game. It's, it's, it's unrivaled. So, it's going to look pretty similar to earlier. As a ba as a backup plan, I accidentally summoned the Apo, but you guys know what it meant to be. Boral Sword, close out the game, and that's going to be all she wrote, because the perfection provides the backup in case there was anything that could try and stop us. Let's show one more, and we'll bring it to a close. All right, guys, final replay for the video, but don't go anywhere yet, because I'm going to show you the deck list and a quick breakdown. You want the in-depth breakdown, slide on over to my YouTube channel. I'll be sure to give it to you. Now we're facing off against the saucy Salamangra. I'm going to show you his hand, too. You can see where we're facing down, all right? This is one of the greatest Salaman great players I know, my friend TK. And I got to give a shout outs to my friends Lewis and Tom, who are helping us test the new format going into things with some of those earlier replays. Um, he's going full combo. 
this is what the deck does now. It actually goes for this insane Link 4 that lets you search Rage, and he also backs it up with the Roar. So that's a double Trap card and a potential Pop 4 on my turn. I'm going to have to figure out how the heck am I going to break this going second, all right? So frankly... There could be worse interruptions to deal with. And the real thing you have to worry about is if you're playing against Dryatron, you have to know, keep close attention to how much fodder they have in hand because they're going to need it. That You need something to tribute, whether your names are engraved or you have other names in hand. One of the best things you can do is remove access to the rituals of the other Drytron names. Now look at this, guys. I eat a Nibiru right now. Absolutely obliterates me. And he's got the Gazelle. He's lining up extra names. I have to use my Dynamondo here. I'm kind of in a rough situation. Luckily enough, Dynamondo has another effect where I can spin monsters from the opponent's field back into the deck. Or excuse me, any card back into the deck when it is summoned just by taking a ritual from the grave and putting it right on back into the deck so i'm going to do that to the gazelle try and get it out of rotation swing over the nibiru but not a great situation that certainly was suboptimal and i definitely should have played around it a little bit better but oh he's got circle and if we look at his hand right now that is not a bad hand far from it actually i'm gonna line up my perfection right now since it was properly ritual summoned already i can tag out the dynamondo to bring it on back to the field and i've got it and a dream. One Omni Negate. Is it going to be enough? Let's find out. So he's going to go Gazelle, go for the Bailings. Jack Jaguar is going to put back that four, summon it on back, bring back the Spinny. Oh man, this is looking scary. We're going for the Foxy, going for the update, Jammer. No, dude, nope, nope, nope. I waited too long, but even if I used it earlier, it wasn't going to matter. Plenty of recursion there. If I tried to negate and destroy the Gazelle, he could just use Bailings Engrave to protect it, then bring back Spinny, and it would have likely been the same result. So, hey, all good. Losing game one to Salad. Not something I thought I would say. I'm going to go Alpha Pitch Zeta, and he knows it's over. All right, guys, if you need to know what Alpha Pitch Zeta does in this build, I suggest you come check out the combo tutorials on my channel, and I'm going to be doing a brand new deck profile and a full in-depth combo tutorial at a later time in the near future. So definitely want to check that out. Going into game three, I've got a hand. I've got one hand trap and a dream. And let's see what we can do here. This is going to be a heck of a match. So the opponent opens up with Foxy, grabs the Salamangrate of Fire, and oh, look at that. That's a scary hand. We got Ash and we got Droll in there. Oh, man, this is going to be a tough one. So goes for the Spinny, and look at this. Goes for the Mirage Stallia, which normally is able to summon Gazelle straight out of the deck. Imperm comes in clutch here. Super important. Put the opponent on nothing but a Mirage Stallio and a Goza match. Oh, remember when we were playing around that earlier? We did have to take this card down. Wasn't too bad. So let's see what we can do this time around. I've only got the two names. Oh, I thought I only had one. Actually, we got two. So I go for the Alpha first, pitching off the Ben 10. And oh, that's nasty. I got hit with the Droll. So maybe should have started with Nova. Eh, possibly, but hey, it's not going to be in the world here. I end up choosing to go for the Talents to look at the hand, because even though it's going to be tricky for me to knock him out of the game, I've already got access to my Magician of Black Chaos Max, which means I'm going to be able to Chaos lock him out of monster effects if everything goes according to plan. There's still that one unknown back row, but things are looking okay, considering the fact I just got drooled. So I go for the Nova that grabs me the Gamma, the best names to have in the situation. Moy Beta is going to foolish off the Medionis, and you'll see why. Now, here's the reason why I crashed the Moy Beta. I was very concerned that there might have been a Salaman Great Rage set, and he could send that Mirage Dalio from field to grave to pop my monster or send the uh, salman grade of fire from hand to grave to pop as well i want my end board goal here being under droll is to get the chaos max lock online and one more interruption and heck that's exactly what we're going to do here so i'm going to go for that get the uh, summon back off the gamma that we knew we had go for the moy beta so being that I get stuck under this Goza match while trying to set up my Chaos Max Lock, the best thing I could do is end on a Zeus. But hey, that might actually be enough to clear things out. Now here's the thing. We know they got the Salaman Great of Fire from adding it off of the Normal Summon last turn. Going for the Bailinx in the Sanctuary. My logic here is this. I should not use this Zeus until I absolutely need to. So I'm going to let him get some card advantage here. But the reason being is that that goes and match is stopping me from getting access code OTK, all right? And with that only being my one interruption, that Zeus is going to make or break this game. So I see a Sunlight Wolf come out. I see the Gazelle come out. Going to get the free ad back off the Gazelle and the send for the Jack Jaguar. Bringing back Spinny, overlay from Mirage Stalio, this is the time. This is when it would begin to become unsurmountable. And if this Mirage Stalio gets linked off, he's going to be able to put the Zeus back into my extra deck. Can't take a risk like that. So we're going to redeem 
team that here, clear off the board, and that's going to be all she wrote. Even through that droll in that last game, we're able to lock things up. If you have a strong enough hand, you might be able to find yourself doing that as well. But those are the replays. That is some pretty, pretty strong strategy. I got to tell you, we're playing against some new stuff, playing against some old stuff with new stuff in it, and all in the spirit of the new meta, okay? Trust me, folks. Drytron is going to be a deck you've got to be prepared for, and you might want to give a try to. Let's close things out with a quick little profile. Right, this is what we were playing in the videos, and this is my first take for the new format. So I'm not going to go through it card by card. I'm just going to point out some important things. you got a ratio of 10 Drytron names. I could say maybe see myself going a little bit higher on these names to avoid any bricking, but we are already at 44 cards, so it's a little tight. When you're playing Drytron, I find it not to be the biggest deal in the world to go over a little bit over 40, but 44 is definitely as far as I'm willing to push it. Don't really like to push it any higher than that, and I'd honestly prefer to keep it at 40. But when you're doing the perfection package, it makes a little bit more sense that you're going to have those extra cards in there. You got to make room for things like your board breakers. And that's why I want to call attention to Forbidden Droplets. I think everybody is aware that this is going to be one of the best going second cards you can play into the next format. It deals with things like the Albion Lock and Branded with a bringing back that gimmick puppet. It deals with the King Calamity uh, Red Dragon Archfiend from the Mana Deomes. It deals with big boards. It deals with Unchained to an extent. It is really, really powerful. It also deals with the Bist Dweller, which is going to be seeing some play as well. A little tricky for us. So... I wanted to point that out for you, and I also mentioned this while we were going through the replays. Triple Tactics Thrust is both an engine piece and a board breaker, so I highly encourage you to play it if you have access to it. Right now, I'm doing two in this build. Three might be ideal. Maybe you get away with one, but I, I'm, I'm feeling like two is a sweet spot. Let's not forget it is a hard once per turn. And of course, we got our triple copies there with the orange light. Mwah, so glad you've come back home to us. All we need is Eva unbanned, and we're going to be Bing chilling. I'm main in Kurikara because it's also a fairy. More fuel for the Herald of perfection outs things like noir noir is tricky it also outs apollosas which manadium also tends to end on so it's out in those big problems for us make things a little bit easier and if you do have to take care of a nor and they get the add back off the continuous spell not the end of the world because you're playing dry tron you might be able to knock their butts out anyway now quick side note on the side deck i've got triple copies of the greatest super ancient organism in here i want to give a huge shout out to jordy wang my dry kage from across the pond here this is a very powerful card when you're facing down whether it be something like tier elements which is also going to see a lot of play going into the new format facing down the rescue ace they play a lot of high level monsters and the branded it's basically like a mystic mind for them because they can't attack with the level six or higher monsters so you can put them under the chaos max lock have this to back you up and then also i'm citing the amor factor pain okay amor factor is better for some of those matchups where the chaos lock might not be what you want to go for because they're still able to establish big monsters and pressure that are going to be interrupting you on your turn i'm looking at you branded in particular that's a matchup where i'd be like okay man i'm gonna take out that chaos max put in that amor factor instead the same thing applies for a deck like runic all right because amor factor skips the opponent's main phase one so do the runic spells skip their battle phase. So if they skip their main phase one and skip their battle phase, they actually skip their entire turn. That's what the Amor Factor Pain FTK is built around. It's a turn skip deck that locks the opponent out of their battle phase using something like a Thunder of Ruler in conjunction with Pain's effect. They basically don't get a turn. So Runic can do that for you for 100% free. That's why it makes sense to side in that card. If we look in the extra deck real quick, you can see some of your staples here. I'd like to have more room for a second copy of Dynamondo. Right now it's a little tricky. Don't know if I want to cut the Nightmare Phoenix, but... Uh, that is your own prerogative if you choose to do so. And Underworld Goddess uh, is another one I think is quite important for outing the Noir or any other tricky boss monsters. We saw how helpful it was in that Unchained matchup. And yep, we've got our X Seed lineup. Fuko, shout out Fuko. This is a great card in case you get drolled. And we've got the Zeus, all right? Zeus, big send boy, you have to play it as well. Beatrice is essential, and these are your two targets for the one copy diviner we play in the main. That is the quick hit version of this deck profile. If you have any questions about it, be sure to throw them down in the comments or come on over to my channel. Let me know what they are. More than happy to help you out. But that's all I got, guys. Again, huge shout out and thank you to Triff for having me on. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to Triff, man, the absolute legend, the pen god. I appreciate him immensely, and I got to issue a quick challenge to him. Next YCS that I see you at, my friend, I challenge you to an arm wrestling contest, all right? All right, I'm all done here, guys. Logan J.Y. sent off. Have a great day. I'll see you beautiful people later. Peace.